Mills Young here. Who's ready to bet on UFC? Me. That's who. So I'm about to run down this whole UFC London card for you guys. It's a lot of fights on the card. It's over 14 fights on the card. Um, I'm going to give you guys my best predictions, my best picks, and just go over it real quick, you know. But before I do that, I need all you guys to go ahead and smash that like button for me right now. Put your comments in there. Let me know, man. How'd you guys do last week? Over here, we pretty much went flawless, man. We got every single fight right predicted except for the Norma Dumont fight. Key note, that Norma Dumont fight, I changed my mind on Friday and Saturday. Norma Dumont was a premium bet that I actually ended up selling. So, I mean, a flawless night if you ask us in here. But, hey, we'll try to get every prediction right and not miss one. Um, but let's keep it going, man. UFC London, headlined by Tom Aspinall versus Marcin Tybora. Let's go over the first fight of the night. First fight of the night is going to be taking place in the uh, little guys division. What? Little guys? How you going to call the flyweights that? Because I am. All right. Rafael Fialo comes in uh, 14 wins, 13 losses, representing Brazil, taking on Daniel Barres. All right. The favorite is Fialo. Last time out, we seen him against T T uh Mohamed Maikov, I, I want to say it was. Um, he was up those rounds, and then, you know, he ended up uh, getting tapped out, I want to say, in the last round. The opening odds is roughly around a minus 120 on Fialo. I think the dog's live in this one. I like barriers in this one. Moving on to the next fight of the night. All right, this one's going to be a nice one. UFC uh, newcomer, who? Shayna Bannon, representing Irish, is going to be taking on Bruno Brazil, representing Brazil. Random, right? All right, man. This flight's uh, going to be pretty much going on. The favorite's going to be Brazil. She didn't look good in her last fight out. Why? Because she got knocked out by Denise Gomes. But the favorite in this fight's going to be Brazil. Minus 145. Uh, the newcomer, uh, Bannon, only has five fights, but she's an acclimated uh, kickboxer. You know, she definitely got some titles um, before she came into the UFC. One of these fighters are going to just be able to uh, out leg kick the other one. I'm going to go with the Brazilian in this one. I think Bruno Brazil gets it done right here. Moving on to the next fight. This is going to be a banger. B -b 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 banger alert. Chris Duncan, 10-1. Okay, taking on Yanel Ashmos, 7-0, undefeated. Yanel Ashmos, last time on a contender series, starts the guy real quick. Uh, you know, I like the guy. He's the underdog in this fight. Taking on Chris Duncan. Oh, Chris Duncan, I know this guy a lot, man. He's fought on a contender series twice. Fought over there in Bellator, Cage Warriors. I've been following his career for a minute now. Um, Chris Duncan opened up a minus 160 favorite. Money's been coming in on the dog. Now he's down to a minus 140. I'm going to go with Chris Duncan in this one, man. Uh, I know what I've seen. He's a he's a better fighter. He was able to get the win against Omar Morales in his last fight out. He was able to mix in those takedowns, too. Um, and I, I think he gets it done in here. I want to say even uh, by decision at that. Moving on to the next fight on the card. Another women's fight taking place at the 135 weight class, Bantamweight division. Caitlin Vieira, 13-3, taking on Penny Kianzad. All right, last time we seen Penny Kianzad, I want to say it was about a year or two ago. Uh, she got the win over Lena Lansberg. Um, it might even have been longer than that. Caitlin Vieira, her last time out, I forgot who it was against, but she did look good. All right, before that, though, she was able to get the wins. Wins over Holly Holm. Wins over Misha Tate. When you look at her record, she has some of the she has some great fights, you know, with uh, some of the better people uh, in MMA. Wins over Katz and Gano, I want to say, too. Um, so, she's a minus 135 favorite. Penny Kian said, I really can't trust her. I think Caitlin Vieira is going to be able to clinch her, keep her up against the cage, and outbody her. She's a big woman, and she comes in there flexing like, Arr! so I'm going to go ahead and go with Caitlin Vieira to get it done. I think you're going to be seeing Arr! right after this, you know what I mean? Let's keep it going on the card. Before we do that, I need you guys to go ahead and smash that like button again, because if you didn't smash it earlier, I'm going to need you to smash it, just like Mohamed Makayev is going to smash Brian Barberena on the next fight. This fight is taking place at the middleweight division. Brian Barberena is not a middleweight, though, but he's fighting at the middleweight division. Okay, Mohamed Makayev, all right, man, uh, Muradov, okay. Mahmoud Muradov. 
Sorry, man. You know how it goes. They all, man, I, you know. All right, man. Mahmoud Muradov, you know, his last time out, man, not looking good either. Uh, coming off of two losses in the UFC, he's the big favorite in here. He's taking on Brian Barbarina. Brian Barbarina, he struggles with takedowns. If, if uh, Muradov is smart here, take him down, keep him down, ground him out, ground and pound. All right, moving on to the next fight on the card. This is going to be taking place in the heavyweight division. Kind of like this fight a little bit for what it's worth. Jamal Polk's 10 and 3, taking on uh, Mick Parkin, 6 and 0, undefeated. Mick Parkin, both these fighters made their debut off the Contender Series. Jamal Polk's, you know, actually got the contract off the Contender Series. Mick Parkin, uh, last time out, he was able to get the finish in that fight. Um, Jamal Polk's. When it comes down to it, I think he's the better fighter in here. He's a minus 150 favorite. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I think he gets it done. He has a nice jab. If he can mix in a little bit uh, clinch time and, and mix in his jiu-jitsu, we'll see what, what can happen in this. But I think Jamal Polk gets it done in this one. Moving on down the card. All right, man. So next fight on the card, this going to be a good one. Joel Alvarez takes on Mark DeCasey. Mark DeCasey is a guy to where nobody can point their finger on, you know. They don't know how he's ever going to fight, fight to fight. He's never fighting the same, in other words, you know. So you really can't trust him. Joel Alvarez, though, 19-3 record, you know. Um, he's one of those fighters to where he comes out there. You know what he's going to do. He's going to probably pull guard and try to submit you. On the feet, he's long, rangy for the division. A lot of people don't know how he can make the weight class because I think he's like 6'3 or something. Got a long reach, too, at that. Um, but his losses... Man, I've been riding with him for a minute, man, you know. Um, and his losses against the better people in the division. A loss to uh, Demir Ismagulov, a loss to Armin Sarukian. Uh, in this fight, he's a minus 180 favorite up to a minus 200 favorite. I think Joel Alvarez gets it done. Moving on down the card. All right. Welterweight division. Who we got? Johnny Parsons, 8-3, taking on Danny Roberts, a.k.a. Hot Chocolate. Yeah, that's his nickname, Hot Chocolate, folks. All right, Danny Roberts going to be the hometown fighter, man. He's representing London, so he's going to have that London crowd all behind him. Johnny Parsons, we haven't seen this guy fight in about two years. His last time fighting, he got the win over Solomon Renfro in the Contender Series. Uh, I've been listening to some interviews out there, you know, and um, the reason why he hasn't been fighting, I guess he was dealing with some concussions and stuff. Um, it's pretty much a pick em fight in here. Uh, Danny Roberts, you really can't trust him. You don't know what you're going to get. If this was about three years ago, he was he was going forward in the division. He was fighting way more recent. Um, he's been taking time off. He only kind of fights when it seems like he wants to. I think uh, Johnny Parsons gets this one done. Okay, next fight on the card going to be taking place in the Bantamweight division. Davey Grant, 13-6. Uh, you know, taking on Daniel Marcos, 14-0. Daniel Marcos, slight favorite on the board, minus 140. Davy Grant, underdog. You know the story with Davy Grant, man. He's always going to fight for your money out there. The only thing is, is sometimes he just doesn't fight smart. Um, you know, so I, I hear some people saying he's live in this fight. I like Daniel Marcos in this fight just from what I've seen in here. And I know what I've seen with Davy Grant. 13-6 uh, and six record. Um, you know, he doesn't really... He doesn't really win when he's supposed to. You know, he just wins surprisingly. We'll move on down the card. This one, banger alert, starting on the main card. So since we're starting on the main card, if you guys want to see my main picks and what I'm betting on for this UFC card, head on over to Pick Dogs. I got all my picks up there. Uh, I'm going to be putting them up in my packages. So that's where you can get my UFC bets. Uh, last week, we went 5-0, man. We swept the board, you know. So we, we hope to do the same thing. All right, let's keep it going. Right now on this one, Leroy Murphy, 12-0 with one draw, uh, taking on Joshua Kolobov, 11-1 record. All right, and one draw. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Two fighters fight each other with a draw. Mm-hmm. One's going to have the hometown crowd. No, they're both kind of going to have the hometown crowd, but it's really going to be with your boy uh, Leron Murphy when it comes down to it because he's representing London, and that's where the card is at. He opened up at a minus 160 favorite on the books out there, down to a minus 140 right now. Some people like Josh Koulibaly. I want to say he is live. He is a dog. Um, you know, he only has one loss, and that was uh, against uh, Jalen Turner uh, in the UFC. But I like Leron Murphy. I like what I see, uh, you know, so I'm going to be taking Laurent Murphy to get that one done and I want to say he's going to win by decision at that. Moving on down the card, this one's going to be taking place in the lightweight division. You got Ja Herbert 12-4 and four in one draw, taking on Ferry Zaim representing France. Alright, when it comes down to it, this was a pick'em fight. Pretty much 
Mm, I'm gonna say Sunday, Monday through Tuesday. Mm, Sunday through Monday. Now, free Zareem is up to like a minus 155 uh, favorite out there. Shop around for the best line. Um, the comeback on Ja Herbert's anywhere from like a plus 125 out there. Um, and this one, free Zareem's just got better uh, since he's been in the UFC. Uh, last time out, he was able to get the win over Flu Jack. Uh, a few get looked real good in that fight. Mixed in some takedowns in there. He's training at a way better team now. Um, you know, so I expect uh, Free Zayim to get that one done. Okay, next fight on the card: middleweight banger division. Nah, it ain't a banger. I'm sorry. Middleweight fight on the main card taking place. This is going to be a grapple fest, okay? Jiu-Jitsu versus Jiu-Jitsu. I'm trying to grab you and submit you. Who's going to be more stronger? Who's going to be able to submit them? That's what this fight is. What are we talking about, folks? Andre Muniz, 23 and 5 takes on Paul Craig. Okay, 16, 6 and 1. Well, the reason why I say that is because both of these guys... Their weapons is to get you down and submit you. You got one fighter in Paul Craig who would just fall down and just, just to pull guard. Like, he'd be standing there with you, standing there with you. He'd even fake getting hit. He faked, like, falling one time just to get to the ground and try to submit the guy. I don't know if it worked or not. can't remember, but that's him. Andre Muniz, man, um... He lost last time out. I forget against who, but he was a big favorite in there. Ooh. Was it Brandon Allen? Yeah, I think it was Brandon Allen now that I think about it. Um, he didn't look good in there um as the fight got pushed past the uh one and a half uh round mark, you know. So um if he can get you out within the first round, that's where he's liable. After the second round, you really can't trust him right now. Um, but he's a big favorite in there. Two to one favorite, minus minus two ten to be exact out there, or two hundred. Um both these guys, I want to say, are live. I can't really trust them too much because they're both going to win the same way. Um, the difference is this. I think Andre Muniz will get the job done just because Paul Craig will pull guard and go to his back more, inclining Andre Muniz to go down there and at least try to submit him. If not try to submit him, being on top and, you know, maybe landing some ground and pound, maybe winning by a sneaky KO, even though, you know, uh, whoever wins this fight, the best bet is they're going to win by a sub. But I, I think Andre Muniz gets it done in this one. Okay. Next fight on the card. This one's going to be one that I like, man. So, all right. Yeah, let's talk about it. Nathaniel Wood, 19-5. You know, takes on Andre Feely, 22-9 losses. Andre Feely, he's one of those fighters in the division where, you know, his tall frame and, uh, you know, um, his size can give any fighter problems on any night, especially if he's in there mixing up his takedowns. Um, you know, on the feet, he, he he's decent. You know, he has good jabs, good good combos, likes to lead with leg kicks too. Um, you know, but it's when he takes you down and he gets you down, um, you know, if he can mix those in and just be the better fighter that night, it, it's hard for him to see him lose, you know. Nathaniel Wood, though, he's stepping up in this weight class division. This is his second fight right now. He's a real smaller fighter, but, you know, he's a real fast fighter, you know. Um... I like the way he fights in there. He has a good jab. Um, he throws combos. He throws abundance of strikes. So if this just stays on the feet, Nathaniel Wood should win. Nathaniel Wood, I want to say, opened up at a minus 180. I snatched him up then. Now he's like to a minus 210 uh, favorite out there. So I think Nathaniel Wood should be able to get this one done on there. Don't want to spend too much time on that one. But if you ask me, this is a fight to where I say, yes, the dog could be out the cage, folks. Okay? <clears throat> Anybody got a bet or anybody thinking about, you know, um, a nice dog on this card? Andre Feely is a, is a great dog on this card, you know, so so tread lightly on the Nathaniel Wood, even though, uh, like I said, I think he gets it done and I do like Nathaniel Wood, but man, like, um, yeah, I, I, Andre Feely is live in this one. I wish I would have just even stayed off that fight. All right, co-main event. Who we got? Molly McCann stepping up. 13 and 5, taking on Jolly Olofstenko. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, dang, that's funny. Uh, Julia Starenko, man. All right, man, Julia Starenko, man. But it kind of makes sense because her last couple of fights, she kind of stinks, bro. She's like a, like on a, I want to say like a three-fight losing streak in the UFC. I'm not looking at the exact record, but, I mean, it's just bad out there, you know. Um, But... 
She's she's vicious though. She comes to fight. Molly McCann, she's she she's a good boxer. She's just gonna keep it on the feet. Um, she's gonna have the whole town behind her in there. Um, coming off of a loss in her last fight. I know a lot of people is going to have a parlay. She's a minus two to, uh, 210 favorite out there. I think Molly McCann gets it done, but this is another fight to where I'm not I'm not invested too much in. And I'm not... Molly McCann should get it done, but I'm not going to say, like, like Storlenko ain't, ain't live sometimes. Like, she can uh, throw up some uh, submissions on you and stuff. So, watch out on this one. If you guys are relying on this fight to be your last one for to end your parlay with... Maybe find something else if you ask me. All right, main event time. Main event time. All right, before I talk about it, what are you betting on? In this one, in this whole card. No, no, no. I need you to type it in the comments before I talk, man, because I've been talking enough. Now I need you guys, man. So type in right now. What what, what do you guys have locked in? What, what underdog do you think is locked in there? And which fight is not going the distance? All right, cool. I see it now. Main event time. Tom Aspinall. Tommy Aspinall. Uh, Aspinall is back. 12 and 3 record. All right, man. One of those guys I should be fighting for the title, if you ask me. His last fight out, man. Freak injury versus Curtis Blades. Uh, something happened to his leg. I forgot if he threw a kick or if he checked the kick, but his leg just snapped. And he lost, you know, um, and that was that. Now, this is going to be his first fight back, but what? He's a minus 400 favorite, and the guy he's taking on, Marcin Tybor, 24 wins, 7 losses. I mean, one of the guys that a lot of people thought would have got cut a long time ago and not been in the UFC, but he stuck around, and when he stuck around, I was riding that wave and betting him, getting all that underdog money, you know, um, because everybody was betting against him and, and thinking he was done. That's when I was making money with him. Now everybody kind of knows what he's good at and what he's not at good at, you know. Um, and you know, when sometimes when your fighters or underdogs get noticed, they don't win as much no more, and you start to just fall back on them. So I mean, he's an underdog that's live in this fight, if you ask me, okay? Because Tom Aspinall should not be a minus four hundred favorite coming back off of a freak injury. Who knows what can happen? You you haven't taken out one fight since then, okay? So, uh, but Tom Aspinall should get it done. I got Tom Aspinall wins inside the distance in there. That's one of the fighters I remember. Um, ever since he's been fighting, I've been kind of betting him, and I've been making a lot of money on him because uh, I don't think I ever lost except for that fight against Curtis Blades. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take Tom Aspinall to to win and get it done inside the distance in that one. All right. <clears throat> 